Robin, as a theist, are you in favor of searching for other intelligent life in the universe? Yes, I am. I mean, I think as a theist, it, my theism itself inclines me to think, though I can't be sure, that we're not alone. Once, um, because I think God is infinitely creative, and if God wants embodied intelligent life like ourselves, then even more such beings would even be better. And so I would expect that God would create other intelligent life forms in the universe. This is a different kind of theism than most people have had historically. Yes. Admittedly. Admittedly, it's different from in the Western tradition, at least. Yes. Not in the Eastern tradition. Okay, I agree. But in the Western tradition, this is this is right. different. And the what it does is it takes away even more of the so-called specialness and uniqueness of human beings, should we find other life forms. Well, um, we're not special in the sense if we found other life forms in being um, unique, the only intelligent life form, but traditionally the, um, theology hasn't thought that anyhow. They've, they've also populated the world with, for example, angels who are other intelligent life forms. So it's just more intelligent life forms that are embodied is the only difference. Yeah, but that's a, that's a difference that right. theology has rejected historically. Not necessarily. <clears throat> um, in, during the, around the time of the scientific revolution, there was a big debate about this issue of whether there was um, life on other, there was other worlds and extra, whether there was extraterrestrial life. And many Christians at the time, people like Newton and others, Leibniz, argued in favor of the existence of um, such life forms and would or those, possibility of such life forms. And would those life forms have to follow the same, shall we say, salvation process that traditional Christians have followed on this planet? Maybe, maybe not. So we, we wouldn't, wouldn't know if they were... Um, fallen, if they had by um, free choice turned away from God or something like that, then I think a Christian would probably want to say that there would be some kind of similar salvation scheme for them. But the uh, salvation scheme on earth with God becoming incarnate and Jesus and going through the mm -hmm. process of, of life, death, and resurrection, would that one-time occurrence on earth suffice for the rest of the universe, or you have to go no, through I that think there would a lot be, of times? A, probably you would want to say there'd be multiple incarnations. Of the same. Of the same, same but God. it wouldn't... It's, it's going to be pretty busy. Well, that depends on how you think of the um, doctrine of the incarnation. There's two major, there's many views, but two major ones in philosophical theology are one are kenosis, which is the idea that the, the second person, the Trinity, Empty. emptied himself of his divine attributes and became a human being. Under that idea, God, the second person of the Trinity, God the Son, would be very busy going from, you know, our civilization to the Klingons, the Romulans, or what have you. Yeah, dying and, and getting dying resurrected. Dying and rising. Right. But under another view, um, called, often called the two minds view, what God the Son does is takes a, on a human consciousness and a human body as part of his own consciousness, where there's still this overarching consciousness of God the Son. So it takes on, takes up human nature within God the uh, Son. So then... Multiple personalities. And yeah, it was like, but it's, it's multiple personality by choice. And I wish I could be multiple personality <laughs> yeah, by choice, right. solving physics problems and interviewing <laughs> with you right here at the same time. Right. Well, and so what, what, what would happen is then God could... It, have the salvation process going on simultaneously. Yeah, infinite, an, an infinite number of them, as a matter of fact, and would not in any way exhaust the divine being. So it's going to come down to how you think of the question of the incarnation, that question. But what's interesting is that once, as a, a, a theist, you have cons to consider life in the universe, you have a whole series of other issues you have to start dealing with. That's right, as a Christian theist. As a do. Christian theist, if you begin to think and admit the possibility of extraterrestrial sentient life that God created mm -hmm. for a purpose, you now have other issues you got to deal with. Right, and not and even if you thought about, you thought there was these other free will beings in totally other realities. So the only way you're going to avoid that issue is think that we were the only free willed beings God ever created. 
Yeah, that's been a view. That's been a view, but, but it, it's not yours. It's not mine, and it just seems hard for me to conceive of an infinitely creative God just doing it once. So you have to have maybe an, in, an infinitely creative God doing it many times, but then going through the same process he has with us infinitely number of times. Right. Quite a God. Well, an infinite, an infinite God.